So hi there everyone and welcome to Think3D and today we'll see the design and printing overview of various 3D printing technologies like FDM, SLA and SLS. So fused deposition modeling also known as fused filament fabrication is a 3D printing process where the raw material is in the form of a plastic wire filament and that wire filament is fed into the extrusion nozzle and that is going to melt the plastic and deposit it onto the build platform and the build platform moves in either one or two directions and the extrusion head also moves in either one or two directions depending on the type of printer and it, this technology needs supports wherever overhang is needed so either you can print supports within the, the of same material and remove them or you can use water soluble so filaments in the dual extrusion printers and coming to the next technology that is stereolithography where the raw material is in the form of a UV curable resin, resin in the form of a liquid and whenever the laser beam is focused onto that layer it is going to solidify that layer and it is going to deposit on the build platform and the build platform slowly moves downwards it, and depending on the type of printer the build platform either moves upwards or it moves downwards and the scan system will project the ultraviolet light so that the resin gets solidified and the third technology is the selective laser centering or SLS in short form and in this technology the raw material is in the form of powder and that powder is rolled using the roller for each fresh layer and the laser beam will melt those particles and it is going to fuse it together so that a strong layer is formed and for each new layer again the fresh powder will be spread using the roller and the build platform will move downwards as shown in the schematic and this is about the schematic diagram now let's move into the design process and we'll see how the workflow is used so I will open one of the part which I have created previously. So this is a newer iteration for more practical purpose and we will use the torchlight design. This is the second version which we tried to 3D print with FDM. So after the final parts have been created in SOLIDWORKS, you have to convert those files into STL format. So it's very simple instead of SOLIDWORKS for that whatever the body you have you give it a right click and say insert into new part and once each body is converted into new part you can then save as STL file and here instead of saying part I will say STL so that whatever the design you want to 3D print you can simply import them into the slicer I will say FDM FDM sample print I will simply say, say sample print and you can save that and now it's been saved I can simply close this and we will open up the slicer this is the Ultimaker Cura slicer which is commonly used for FDM printing so you can simply import your file by clicking on the open option and we will pick up the sample print file which we have just created and now you can see that the part has been imported you can select whatever the printer is possible there are var various printers available inside of Cura you can add whatever the printer you are using from the drop down menu here and so that your slicer settings will be perfectly applied what will be the number of walls you need, what is the wall thickness typically we can use wall thickness of 1.2 that's a very good value you can use much higher than that but minimum it's better you use 1.2 and this is the infill percentage that's nothing but we will not be printing the object in complete solid and whatever the internal space is there for the part it is going to create various patterns which we will see in, in shortly I will give an infill percentage of 
generally you can give 20 to anywhere to 100 100% means the model will be completely solid and for this particular part you don't need any support so you can simply leave this as blank and click on slice and you can see that the part is shown and with the approximate print time you can simply click on the preview and now you can see various individual layers that are being developed how the printer is going to print it you can see the infill percentage also and infill pattern also we have given infill pattern as triangles you can also change this to cubic or grid or whatever you feel like there are various options so generally it is recommended that you use cubic because it gives the best strength but you can try others as well and after you have selected the settings you can simply click on the save disk and this is going to save it as G code file you can simply save it as a G code file and you can click on save and now this can be used to send it to the 3D printer now we will briefly see the process of how FDM printer works so initially you first load the filament and then you level the bed properly so that the first layer prints perfectly and some printers like the Plasforge printer automatically gives sound when it has detected that the layer height or the distance between the nozzle and the print head and the uh, build plate is proper it gives a sound so that you can level it perfectly and after the leveling is done you start by printing it you can send the file uh, using a pen drive USB pen drive you can save the G code file and send it to the printer and the printing process looks something like this as you can see here it first prints the first layer and then slowly builds the other layers along on top of each other and after the printing is complete you can carefully remove the part from the build plate and typical post processing for FDM parts involve removing of the supports and after the supports have also been removed you can you can file it for smooth surface finish and if there are any unwanted material you can remove it carefully and you can use sandpaper to create smooth surface finish and after it is done this is how the part is going to look like and now we will go to the SLA that is the stereolithography printing so this is the slicer for SLA printer that is any cubic photon so the process is similar you first import the file which you want to print and you change the orientation accordingly and you move it to the desired location that you want and then you can simply hit on the various settings so these are some of the settings you don't need to worry too much about these pretty much you can give the default settings and hit on slice 
and after the model is sliced you can save the sliced file and you can see the individual layers that are being developed on how the print job is taking place and now we'll go to the actual process of how it is done so the process first involves the pouring whatever the resin you want to print with we are using a clear resin here after you pour the resin you first make sure that the proper leveling is done for the bed so the build platform homes itself to particular level and the printing process begins and each individual layer will be cured with the uv light and after it is solidified the build platform will be rising from the liquid layer and again a fresh layer will be contacted with the particular object so in, after the final print is done you will carefully remove the part and gently wash it with water if there is any excess resin and you will first wash the layer or the resin with isopropyl alcohol the ipa or isopropyl alcohol will dissolve any excess resin that is on the part layer part surface and then you again rinse it with water properly and then you place the part in the curing center where the curing chamber will project uv light in all the directions you can see that the curing platform is rotating in 360 degrees where you are able to cure it in all the directions and the curing under uv light for about 20 minutes will increase the part strength by 30% and this is how the part looks like we have printed it with slf printing process this is the clear resin and after the initial feedback has been obtained we have made some more design changes i'll open the latest part file and this is our latest part file we have made some design changes based on the feedback we got from initial printing and finally we will be printing this in sls which is the powder based technology so i will hide one component and i will show you how it is done so we have elongated the battery space so that you can fit it properly and we have created our own battery contacts and you only have to connect wires with this and this is the pocket for the switch and this is the pocket for the led light so that is the whole purpose of 3d printing you evaluate and validate your designs and sls involves only plastic powders that is polyamide nylon powders pa2200 so after the printing is completed this is how the final part is going to look like so you can see that the dimensional uh, accuracy is uh, perfect in case of sls printing and you can see that the surface is little bit better when compared to fdm fdm will be visible layers whereas in sls you have a better surface finish this is the final comparison chart between fdm sla and sls in fdm you typically use a layer height of 0.2 mm in sla these standard layer height is 0.05 mm which is 
50 microns and in SLS the resolution is 0.1 mm layer height and coming to the materials FDM uses plastic filaments of PLA, ABS, PETG etc. And SLA uses ultraviolet curable resins of various grades like clear, tough, flexible, dental and jewelry. And SLA uses standard polyamide powder or nylon powder which is of PA2200 that's the designation. And coming to the strength, although FDM has more strength theoretically, it has material anisotropy and the strength will only be more in x and y directions and strength is almost reduced to by 40 percent when it comes to the z direction but such a type of material anisotropy is not there in SLA or SLS printing technologies where you get same strength in all the three directions and the one more advantage of SLS is that you don't need any supports but whereas FTM and SLA printers would need supports for any overhang geometry in your design. And like I said these are the tolerance values and what is the surface finish which you can obtain with these technologies. The tolerance pretty much remains same both for both FTM and SLS whereas SLA gives the most dimensionally accurate prints. And these are the values of minimum wall thickness of what you can use and what is the minimum hole diameter for the internal features. And the advantage of SLS is that you can achieve a wall thickness of 1 mm so that your parts will be made lighter. And coming to the applications, FTM is best for fast and cheap prototypes and initial validation. So like we said, we have initially validated using the FTM technology and then we modified the design and then used the SLS printing for final product and it is best for the end validation before going for injection molding and now if our design is finalized and we are happy with it, we can start designing the mold and we can go for the injection molding. And regarding SLA, it is only used for specific applications like where you need only accurate dimensional models for dentistry or jewelry items or character modeling. Whereas in a general engineering perspective, you will use either FDM and once the initial visual prototype is validated, you go for functional validation with SLS. And SLS can be used for end use parts like I said because that does not require any tooling you don't need to invest into developing the injection mold tools for that you can directly ship your sls parts to the end customer thank you very much for watching for more details you can visit the services tab where various technologies are given here and you can also read the various blog posts under the latest news the links for these blogs have been given in the description and for more detailed trainings, you can fill the registration form below and we'll get back to you. If you like the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to see more, please hit that notification bell icon to get updates.